So in the last video, I talked about configer, and I left off by explaining the different mechanisms by which configer actually propagated itself, what were the different infection vectors it used. And the main vector was uh, this exploit of MS-0867, uh, which was a, a network vulnerability. Uh, actually, specifically, it was, a, it was a Windows server service vulnerability, which uh, was a network service vulnerability. And as a result, that was the, the main way by which uh, Configer propagated. And actually, this in part explained why it was such a runaway success from the perspective of the attackers. And in particular, a lot of systems out there were not patched versions of Windows. So for example, if people were running pirated versions of Windows, which is uh, which, which tends to happen in certain regions more rapidly, uh, and in those regions, people got infected very heavily by Configure because they weren't able to update or patch their own systems because they were not running legitimate copies of Windows. Now, there are other mechanisms by which Configure propagated. And let me talk about some of those mechanisms here. And I do want to point out that uh, these mechanisms, these other mechanisms kind of came around uh, kind of December 2008. So in December 2008, uh, there were additions, improvements made to config and help it propagate in other ways. And so one of the most uh, common ways by which config are propagated is via what's called a dictionary attack. So a dictionary attack. And a dictionary attack is basically one where you try different passwords on the system. And in the case of config, or what would happen is the, the threat would try uh, a list of about 240 common passwords on locally accessible machines. So for example, if it, there was a machine that was infected here, it might try to infect these other machines by uh, connecting to them and trying common passwords to see if you could actually break into those machines. And, and what would happen is a lot, many times, people would not uh, choose complicated passwords. They would choose passwords that could be guessed very easily. And in those cases, uh, conflict would spread to these other machines. Now, what was interesting is, and this is kind of an interesting artifact of, of this uh, approach, if uh, somebody chose, let's say, a, a pretty good password or a password that could not easily be guessed, what would start to happen is uh, Configure would basically result in many uh, failed password attempts, and a lot of systems are configured so that if you have too many failed attempts in a row, that creates a lockout. So in other words, you cannot actually connect to that system for some period of time or, or, or until an administrator gets involved. And that actually led to a way to detect that Configure might be on a network. And, and if you started to notice that your network, certain machines were no longer accessible and they were locked out, uh, it would, could be because Configure was trying to access those machines with, uh, with weak passwords. Now aside from, uh, aside from using dictionary attacks, another common mechanism by which Configure propagated was removable media. That's a very popular mechanism today and, and uh, the main use case of main use case of removable media is you the USB drive that's kind of the when people talk about removable media they typically use the USB drive and here what would happen is Configure would copy itself onto the drive and then it relied on something uh, called auto run and actually in particular Configure did copy itself as auto run that inf and the idea is that uh, many media drives would uh, would execute auto run that inf on insert uh, automatically even if there was no user intervention and that allowed conflict to spread more rampantly. Um, as an added measure, what was interesting is that the uh, the conflict could actually put the words, I think it was open folder to view files on the auto run program itself to trick users into running it. So it was actually also a kind of social engineering mechanism as well uh, for dealing with conflict. Okay. Now the other thing that I do want to mention about conflict in this video is that uh, I, Microsoft actually w was you know, aware of the possibility, aware of this vulnerability of MS-0867, and they actually issued an out-of-band patch, and I'll put this maybe patched, in uh, October, I think it was October 23rd of 2008, uh, and this, actually, this patch was out-of-band, and by that I mean that typically what Microsoft does is it releases patches on a very particular day of the month, it's typically called Patch Tuesday, and that's when Microsoft patches all of its vulnerabilities that it discovered uh, that have not yet been patched, that it, that it has a patch for. Uh, and, and that allows basically system administrators to organize the process by which patches are rolled out. For the case of the exploit of MS-0867, that vulnerability was patched out of band. It was not patched on Patch Tuesday because it was such a big vulnerability and Microsoft did not want anyone else to uh, be infected by it that they uh, 
uh, were more proactive and actually patched this particular vulnerability out of band. But having said that, even though the vulnerability was patched, uh, it turns out that 30% of systems out there uh, were still unpatched. 30% so of PCs were unpatched as of, uh, as of January 2009. So even though a few months had passed, there were a lot of systems out there that were unpatched. And, and there are many reasons maybe people didn't want to uh, patch their systems ahead of time. Maybe they were worried about the patch causing issues. Uh, not everybody uh, it applies patches. So there are all these issues with patches in general. Uh, and that's something to keep in mind. That actually did help configure to propagate probably more, far more than it could have had those systems been patched appropriately. Now, the last thing I do want to mention in terms of configure is that there were multiple variants of configure. Uh, and so, what were these variants called? And in fact, they have quite simple names. Uh, so, these variants are basically called variants A, B, C, D, and E. So, uh, you have variant A, which was introduced in. Uh, and actually, there's actually two different naming conventions. Let me, let me uh, talk about the different naming conventions here. There's actually the so Configure uh, when it came out, a group was formed called the Configure Working Group that helped to name the different variants. And they have a slightly different naming convention. So even though uh, I think Microsoft called it version A, uh, B, C, D, and E, and the Configure Working Group called them A, B, B plus plus, C, and E as if that's not confusing enough. And these variants were released at different times. I think this was variant A came out in November of 08, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, B came out in December of 08. Uh, variant B++ or C came out in uh, February of 09. And then we had another variant in March of 09. And then the last variant, which is E, came out in April of 09. OK? And these variants basically differ with respect to the infection vector used, in, in how updates were done, in the underlying resiliency of the threat, in malicious action, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, the one interesting note in terms of all the variants, and something I do want to call out explicitly, is that it was actually variant E, the last variant, that started to actually try to make money off Configure. Okay, and this is actually really interesting because this is the... Up until this point, Configure was really just about gaining steam, getting on a lot of systems. It was only until the last variant that, that came out, variant E, in which things like SpyProtect were installed or that the, the Walldeck botnet was installed onto Configure. Okay, hopefully that was useful. In the next video, I'll talk more about Configure and we'll talk going into its specific architecture and some of the techniques that it used to stay resilient. I hope you join me for that. Thanks a lot.